Hey folks, if you just watched our video on how many houses to look at before you make an offer, you're in the right place. Hopefully you're enjoying this series. There's a lot more to this buying process that we're going to bring to you over the next several weeks or so. So stay tuned to the channel for that. We have recently recorded a video on how uh, to go about making an offer. When is the right time to do that? And I think I communicated in that video as best I can. So this one might look a little older, a little bit different. It's really not that old, but it's a little different than this one. So check that out on uh, when to make an offer and then stay tuned to the rest of the whole series where there'll be a ton of value for you there as well. Sometimes you find a house and it meets every single one of your original criteria and you still shouldn't buy it. Let's talk about why. Is how to know when it's time to make an offer. This is a little bit more of an art than it is a science. There's no date, there's no number of days, there's no number of homes, there's no price, there's no really any technical aspect to this. It's a feel thing, but a great agent can lead and guide you through this process and help you identify when you've arrived at that place where it is now time to make an offer. Now, if you did watch the other videos, you know uh, in certain markets, you need to arrive at that feeling a little quicker. In other markets, you can afford to take your time to arrive at that feeling. But I believe you'll know as long as you set your non-negotiables up front, you'll know when you've achieved those non-negotiables. That's the technical piece, when you've checked those boxes and obviously we all make compromises of one kind or another. So there's no perfect house, even if you custom built it with $100 million. There's going to be aspects of every house that's a compromise, it's not ideal. But once you've found a house that has the features you want, has the location you want, and has the price you want, usually it's a good time to make an offer, but not every time. There's this intangible thing that for the last 15 or 16 years that I've been doing this, I've seen time and time and time again. And that's when somebody can stand in a home and say, this feels like home to me. This could feel like home. Now, there's a difference in that thought, this feels like home today, and this could feel like home to me. Maybe it's the furnishings and the color, but there's this happens, and it usually happens in the entryway of a home when someone can stand there, sort of look around and just say, yeah, this could be home. There are times when all the boxes are checked, the square footage is right, the bedrooms are right, the bathrooms are right, the school district is right, the backyard is right, and the price is right. It just doesn't really feel like it could be home. And you shouldn't have to buy a house that you don't feel great about. Now, there are times in the market where, like we said, you might make some compromises or you might say, look, I don't know if this is my forever home. This is a great, it feels like it could be home for the next 10 years. I mean, that, that's a different sort of critical thinking type deal, but you should never have to buy a home. You should never be put in a position to buy a home that you're like, I still don't know. I mean, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel like home yet. But at the same time, you can get that feeling often when the criteria might not be a perfect fit. And that's where having someone help lead you and guide you through the process is tremendously valuable. Someone that can remind you and say, well, these were our non-negotiable items and this one is missing two of them. And I, I think based on our conversation we had, that was low emotion, you know, high, uh, clear thinking that we should probably step back and maybe not go ahead on this house or we should take some time to think on it. But really the tangible things we're looking for is do we meet all our non-negotiable items that we established up front? And could this feel like home? Now, some people are more feelers than others, but I think most of you watching this, most of you that are actually looking for houses know what I'm talking about. So those are the two things I wanna to marry together. We've met all the non-negotiables, we've achieved that, we have all that, and this feels or very clearly could feel like home. Once you've reached that point, I don't care if you're in a buyer's market or a seller's market, it's time to make an offer. Even in a really low competition market, people lose out to other buyers or sellers decide to take their home off the market or something changes. So once you've matched those two things, get that thing under contract. What's up folks, I'm back. Hopefully you liked that version of the video. And I want you to check out the other video that should be suggested somewhere on the screen right now about how to win in a multiple offer situation. Depending on what market you're in, that can be really, really difficult. It's always really, really difficult. But if you're in a market with multiple offer situations, you have got to be prepared up front. So check out that video and I'll talk to you on the next one.